Hey guys, what's going on? So, back again. And um, I wanted to kind of touch base a little bit more on a particular build. The reason why my last video was um, a little bit shorter was because of the fact that I have another guitar that's similar that I'm about to go over right now um, that had it coincide with the Frankenstein, Frankenstrat, whatever you want to call it, guitar. Um, so I wanted to just kind of go in a little bit more detail uh through this other guitar that again is extremely extremely similar so without further ado the guitar we're gonna be going over if i can grab it because this thing is extremely heavy this is my heaviest guitar by far oh look it's the uh the frankenstein again okay with the exception of it has a wolfgang neck which means yes it has the <clears throat> neck pocket of a Wolfgang, obviously. So it's a Frankenstein body with the Wolfgang neck. Now, I don't know that I've ever seen Eddie necessarily play this guitar, but I did see this in a magazine once. Um, and I just thought it was super cool with uh, with the with the Wolfgang neck on it. Now, I mean, obviously the, the Frankies that they have out now since 2020 um, has a similar neck um, on it that's like a Wolfgang profiled kind of neck except it's more, you know, stratish. Um, but uh, this one, um, I got, you know, we'll talk about the body. I got from Lock Bodies, okay? Um, and before I dive more into into that, um, I did get it, I asked him to make the, uh, it was like the, a Frankenwolf, if you will, uh, guitar. Now, it's up on his site now for purchase. It wasn't until, I'm not saying I was the first person I ever asked for this. It was probably already a plan for that guy. But um, literally, right after I had um, uh, ordered it, it wasn't too much longer. He had it available on a site to buy. Um, now the wood is is ash, um, despite it not being really grainy, like my other frankincense. So you can see the grain a little bit. Um, but I went over this thing with a bunch of paint. Um, so let me kind of just backtrack just a little bit, okay? So I have another build going on right now, um, which is the uh, the 78 um, uh, replica is what I'm going to do, uh, except uh, it's, it is going to have a Floyd on it. I don't really particularly care for the just the normal uh, tremolo. Um, but this is this is it um, so far. Um, and again, this is lock guitars. That's what it looks like there. Yeah, long custom guitars, as you can see there. All right, so here's here's the body. This is basswood. This is uh, ex extremely light. Um, but the reason why I wanted to talk about this one is because I've noticed people that kind of do the Frankenstein builds um, will have these painted on here like I do. And then they go over it and they tape it off and they do it with the red. Now, again, you can do what you want, but that if you want to stay accurate, that's wrong, okay? Um... Reason being is because back in the day, this is actually pinstripe tape that Eddie used, um, which is why right over here, this piece is bent. So on the actual guitar back in the day, it was a bent piece of tape. It's all actual tape. Now this is paint, all the bigger stripes, but these little tiny ones are actually pinstripe tape that was put um, on the guitar. Okay. So again, when this one's complete and done, I'll go over this one um, with you guys. Uh, but, uh, yeah, again, I just want to show you kind of A, what the lock custom looked like for whatever reason. And to not put that on your guitar. So, again, th th this this build is the same as it was as the Frankenstein. Pretty much all the other builds for the most part. Black first, then white, then red, and then your clear coat or whatever you want to finish it with, if anything at all. Um, but, uh, again, that, that covers the pinstriping, okay? So, th again, there's no pinstripes. Uh, this was tape that was taken off. Now, I painted this on here because I didn't want it to ever come off and get sweaty and this and that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so th that's what it would look like uh, underneath all the red. Um, which then came into the guitar I talked about a couple weeks ago, which is, again, my, my Frankenstein with, you know, the normal headstock, which I also failed to mention in that video, and I want to cover real quick, 
because again, this is off the cusp, this is not edited, is the cigarette burns I forgot to mention. Um, I just did that with uh, obviously some cigarette buds, burned it on there, but it didn't burn all the way through. And you have to be careful when you do the burn because if there's lacquer on the guitar, you could cause a fire. So I just used some stain as well and uh, you know, made it happen to, to look like, like that, okay? Stain is your friend. Um, if you mix it with some cigarette ash, it looks a lot more realistic. Um, but again, you know, that's, that's my Frankenstein. That's the guitar that you guys saw last time. And again, mind you too, remember how I said I got this, uh, this wrong. I got it right on this, this other one. Uh, but on the other one, the thing that I got wrong is this, uh, this white stripe. But when I look back at the photos of the Frankenwolf in the magazine, the stripe wasn't like this. It was actually a little bit farther over. So, um, again, you guys take a look for yourself, see what you think, what you see. Uh, but, you know, no build is perfect. And um, that's why they're just tribute guitars or replicas, you know. Um, so, it's your own opinion. Let me put that there without it falling over because I would cry. So, again, let's talk about this bad boy. Oh, God, this thing is so heavy. Um, <laughs> it's so heavy. This is probably every bit of a 10-pound guitar, if not more. Maybe 11 pounds. I mean, this sucker, this sucker has got, it's got some weight to it. Not that that even did anything for you guys. I just wanted to show you how athletic I am, I guess. Um, so again, locked body. Um, the paint that I use again is Duplicolor, Duplicolor paint. I did um, Wimbledon white. And again, Wimbledon white, if you look, it's a lot more of a, uh, off-white tint. It looks a lot older, a lot more aged than, you know, bright white. I'm trying to get this in a little bit better lighting for you. Let me move that, you know. So if you notice the whites here, they're, they're the same. So again, Wimbledon white. Um, so that's the color white that I used. Black, I just used Universal. Uh, black and Duplicolor. I used two cans of each. I did, obviously, the black first. Two cans on the front, two cans on the back. Taped it off. Did, um, obviously then the white. And then went over it with uh, the Super Red 2 in Duplicolor. Again, these are all lacquers, so lacquers burn from one coat into the next coat into the next coat. And if you notice here, because I put the red on a little bit thicker, you can still see that black stripe underneath, but not like in comparison to, to to that one. See how that one is a little bit lighter. Um, so again, if you go over with like one can or two can, it doesn't really matter. This one I just went over with multiple cans of paint because before I just, I, I couldn't make up my mind whether I wanted to use wood grain filler uh, because of the, the, the grain and the ash or not. Um, but once I got the body painted, and again, how I got this part here, right? See, it's the white stripe I was talking about. It's supposed to go up here, this black stripe, it's about right here, and it's supposed to go up at an angle more through that. But when I looked at the magazine photo, that white stripe is a little bit further down. So, you know, maybe me looking at it now in comparison to my other one, I'm just like, what did I do? Uh, but I think I think I got it right. Uh, so when I originally got the body, the, the issue at hand was, is this is around 2020, which we all know is hell on earth. Um, so the pandemic... And with the pandemic, when that happened, uh, I was trying to figure out how to get a neck. Now, Musicraft puts out a neck. I want to say it's the MKW, Musicraft Wolfgang or whatever. And it has this profile, but the headstock, because it's, I guess it's trademarked, um, looks more like the PV. Now, the PV has a little scoop right here, and it's a one piece of wood, okay? More rounded like that. And it's got a little scoop here, and then the rest of this is colored in. This is PV and this and that. Um, but they, it doesn't have this this cut in it. So I bought a, I think it was the Koa um, Wolfgang Standard. Um, it was okay. I hated the guitar, but again, I didn't buy the guitar because it was, uh, um, I was going to plan on using it for anything outside of just parts. And that's exactly what I used it for, was parts. So a couple things to keep in mind is the neck pocket was perfect. It didn't require any work. It fit perfectly um, in here with, with um, what Lock Customs gave me. 
sweet. Uh, there's a couple issues. So the necks that were being put on all the Wolfgangs at that time were all baked. As you can see, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a darker wood, right? It's baked, and I love baked wood because these things stay in tune for forever. And I believe it has a double graphite truss rod too, which makes it really stable. Um, but uh, baked wood's awesome. Now the magazine, the wood's just, I think it's quarter sawn maple. I know it's really bright white maple, okay? Well, obviously this is not, and none of those necks were around at that time. It was very hard to find. I couldn't afford to buy one with the maple neck. Because uh, there was a lot more money. And I'm like, well, I just want to make sure this works first. So when I got the body, the body was obviously a very lighter color. Much lighter. And I don't think you can really see anywhere on the wood where the natural color was. I mean, if you kind of look here, it was much lighter than this. It was, Okay, it was probably closer to here. Okay, see how light that wood is? And look how dark this is. Very light. So, since it was lighter wood, obviously I ran into a problem knowing full well that the neck was going to be dark. That was the first issue. Uh, so, what did I do? I used my uh, stain, brown stain. And this is where I say a little bit goes a long way. It was very tricky to get this to pretty much match. Um, lighter coats are your friend. Work your way up. I put it on way too thick, and then I had to wet in a rag and then wipe it off to try to lighten the color. Um, and then, you know, it came out as so. So I think it, it blended really well. It looks good now. It looks like it's natural, like it was, you know, meant to be that way. And then I had to go back in in the wood grain everywhere else where the wood was showing and make it, you know, um, match. Because <laughs> the, the rest of the wood was going to be white, right? So it's gonna look kinda look kinda funky. And again, I also had to darken the back here too. Okay. So that's how we did that. Issue number two. Issue number two with this is I saved the bushings. Now the bushings are these, okay? From the Wolfgang. They're little rubber bushings. You can't buy those anywhere. Um, so originally I was gonna use those. Now because they're rubber. On the actual Wolfgangs, the hole is a little bit deeper, okay? And I remember when he asked me, hey, Kyle, since you want this done, do you want to use those bushings, the rubber ones, or do you want to use the uh, what he would recommend, these metal ones from Stumac, S-T-E-W-M-A-C, Stumac. Um, and I was like playing it on the safe side because I didn't know if this is kind of before I got the Koa Wolfgang, and I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get um, the bushings out. I don't know if they're, like, glued in there. I didn't know because I'd never taken a part of Wolfgang before. Uh, so I just said to do Stumac. So these bushings are metal bushings that you can get from Stumac. I want to say it was, like, maybe 15 or 20 bucks uh, for, um, I don't know, like, eight of them, maybe, something like that, eight to 12. Uh, but they work perfect. It comes with the screws. It, they mounted right on in. It was no problem, no issue at all. Um, so that was issue, you know, potential issue number two. So if you do go with the rubber bushings, you're going to have to get a Wolfgang or maybe reach out to Fender and see if they have some. I'm not sure, uh, but just something to keep in mind because um, I don't know if you buy that now from Locke, if he even gives it as an option or not, uh, but uh, food for thought. Uh, what else? Issue number three. So in that particular photo, uh, you'll probably notice that the headstock has binding around it, okay? It has white binding all the way around it, okay? So with the white binding, that's on all the custom shop stuff. So, because the custom shit, now there's some, I think, Wolfgang standards that have the binding, but it's strictly on top and it's really, it's like maybe half this size. And it doesn't go around to the edges or it overlaps like that on the edges, as you see. So, instead of me spending, you know, three or four grand on a guitar that would be perfectly fine to rip off a neck and then put it on this one, just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, and I would have had to get an older Wolfgang model. Uh, because 
the newer custom shop stuff is all uh, ebony with the block inlays like a Gibson kind of ordeal and this and that. So uh, what I did is I makeshifted it, obviously. So instead of me removing the paint and all this off here, I just, I carefully put my painter's pinstripe tape all the way around on it first to kind of have it as a measurement. And then I put a thick one piece or two of painter's tape and then cut right next to the painter's tape or the pinstripe tape, I should say. And then I left the big piece on and I ripped off my pinstripe tape here on the top, left it on the uh, edges because then I did another bigger piece of tape here and taped off the bottom where the pinstripe tape ended, okay? And then took off that pinstripe tape. Then I went over it with the Wimbledon White around. I always have to do the sound effects for spray paint apparently. And then that's how we got that looking like that. And then I just hit it with um, some satin uh, clear coat because you can see here there's a line right there. See that's you can tell where the finish ended because I didn't want to finish the neck. The neck feels amazing. Uh, there's no finish on it. Uh, so we just taped it off there and finished the back. That way it all just looked normal. Okay. The tuners are the stock tuners that came on the Wolfgang. Uh, the only thing I did was I changed out the tuner strap or the tuner buttons um, and I changed them to perloid. Uh, buttons because on the um, custom shop ones they're they're pearl, pearl Lloyd okay so that's what we did with that I think it turned out pretty well it's not professional but it, it does it's, it does what it's supposed to problem number four problem number four with the Wolfgang neck was literally the Wolfgang neck itself as great as this neck was it had a crack in it let me see if I can find where it is. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell in the lighting, but here's a darker mark for it. So if you look kind of right there, see that dark spot right there? Not the actual fret dot, but right beneath, right above my finger. It almost like somebody went over it with a pen. There's a crack there. That's literally the crack, and it goes up this direction through the neck. So I had to take it to a guitar tech, because that's way above my expertise. Um, he filled it, he corrected it. No problems, no issues there. So um, again, sometimes when you order this stuff, like you might have issues, you might have some cosmetic flaws, you might have some problems. That's why I wouldn't just drop a bunch of money on a really nice guitar and then tear it up to change it into a parts guitar or anything like that for that reason. But again, if you have the money, uh, more power to you. Um, and then, again, to just touch more bass on from the Frankenstrat um, build. Well, before I get there, because I'm getting jumbled, let me go over the parts on this guitar, okay? Because if you notice, this one's obviously a little bit different than the Frankie. So what makes the Frankenwolf different, besides the neck that we just went over, that's done. Um, the things that are different is, again, this is the same. Still a phenolic, single coil pickup. Does work, it's not wired to work. It's a dummy pickup, just like on the last one. But the selector switch, if you notice on this guitar, it's upside down. On this one, look at that. Right side up, upside down. Okay. So when you look it up, the selector switch is, again, turned the other direction. Wiring is still set up similar, but again, it doesn't matter. It's not hooked up to anything. You know, I just place the selector switch on top of it once I get the wires kind of where I want. Kind of tie it with like a bread tie here in the back. No one will see it. And then just screw it. There's a screw here and a screw there that goes into the selector switch to hold it there so it doesn't go anywhere. That's another thing we didn't talk about last time. Um, the pickup is a Seymour uh, Duncan 59. So it's a 1959 PAF, basically reissue pickup. Um, this pickup, again, sounds great. I'd say it's probably more so for the older uh, Van Halen tone, because as far as we know, he used an old Gibson PAF that he happened to rewire himself, because the mad scientist said he was, um, and he kind of re-engineered how pickups are even made today. 
so there's a lot of history lesson on how Eddie really affected the music industry more than just his music. The guy was a mad scientist without even really realizing that he was. And he did a lot of groundbreaking stuff, and I think he has like three patents too. I mean, the guy was, you know, that's why him and, uh, uh, who was it, Leo Fender and uh, Les, you know, Gibson. I mean, that's why they, or Les Paul, uh, Les Gibson. And that's uh, why they would all phone each other and talk about guitars, um, builds, and stuff like that. Um, so again, how we got this right was if you take your, your phone and you blow up this portion of the Frankenstein and then you put lightly a piece of painter's tape that you can see through because of the light shining off your phone and just trace it out with a pencil. Then maybe color it in, peel off the tape carefully, and then cut it out and then place it. Boom. Done. So we finally nailed that sucker. Honestly, I probably have it a little bit, uh, barely crooked, to be honest. But it turned out better, you know, than that. I eyeballed this one. So, little she a little thicker on this side, you know what I'm saying? That ain't a bad thing. Um, another thing I didn't talk about with the Frankenstein build, because if you notice on the back of mine, this, uh, that bottom to your right reflector, there, as I flip you off right there, there's supposed to be adhesive there. Well, as I was working on my guitar, I actually ripped the adhesive clearly off. Just came off. So let me tell you how you do that. So in the back here where the reflectors are, you'll see right here, okay? So what you do with this in particular is when you put on these reflectors, okay, they have sticky adhesive. You're gonna put on the reflectors, they stick on there, obviously. And then if you take an X-Acto knife and you cut right here in the middle of this long, just right there in the middle, okay? Let me do this so you can see it. When you cut here in the middle, you're gonna gradually lift up with your finger here on the edge, take a hammer and just hit it lightly in the middle until you can pull it up because there's adhesive on this side too and it's real sticky. And if you do it just right and apply enough pressure here and hit it hard enough, it's gonna break. And when it does, then you just gradually peel off the reflector. It may not break off one piece, it might break off in a couple pieces. This is on purpose. And then phew, it will come off, okay? If the adhesive comes up, you can literally just lay it back down and it'll stick. Like it's still sticky. And this has been here for a couple of years now. Um, then I took an X-Acto knife and I cut off this part of the adhesive, got my knife in there and peeled it up. And then that's how you get this portion. I don't know anybody to really put out any videos talking about how you do the freaking reflectors. You know, and this part is still stuck there. Now you can take some like lead from a pencil, dip your finger in it and put it on there, dirty it up if you want. You know, you could do that. Lead's a good thing to use um, from like creating like dust. You go to like Hobby Lobby um, or uh, what's the other one? Michael's Craft Store. And they have like in the modeling section, they actually have like dust or like moss and stuff you can use if you want to make it look a little bit more like dust. Um, again, I just use cigar ash for the most part. Not really cigarettes because it's a thicker bud, so you can just get more of it and burn it less. And the cigars smell amazing in comparison to cigarettes. I don't smoke, uh, but they smell great. Unless I'm on vacation, I smoke cigars. Um, but uh, again, that's how you do that. Um, the quarter, you can... Um, I just got it pre-drilled because I had to use a vise last time and drill with different bits because it's uh, different sizes. Uh, for the holes through the quarter to be able to hold it. I had to put it in vice grips and have someone hold it and then me drill through it that they're holding on the edge of a table. Um, so that was a pain in the butt. So I'll just get pre-drilled. You can you can get 71 quarters pre-drilled. Um, another thing that's different with the Frankenwolf is the MXR knob. So uh, the... Uh, sorry, I'm just getting a random text per usual. Uh, the MXR knob is another thing that's different um, about this guitar to keep in mind. Um, so, it's still an original Floyd Rose. Um, here's another pain in the ass thing with this guitar. So, with the original Floyd Rose, okay, it doesn't have the EVH D tuna on it. So, what you do is you just pull this down and put you and drop D on your E string, which becomes D. This is actually tuned to E flat, so D flat. But when you push it back in, then it's going to put you back into your normal E or E-flat tuning or whatever you had that tuned to before. 
So a thing to keep in mind is if you're gonna do that yourself, it is a pain in the ass for because the EVHD tuna was originally meant to go on the EVH Floyd Roses, uh, which again are very similar to a Floyd Rose, obviously, because uh, that's what Eddie had used for a long time. Um, I like the EVH ones. It just depends on uh, which guitar they happen to be on because some are built with better quality metals than others. Some of them are just potluck metals, which, you know, uh, are a piece of shit, um, honestly. But, um, you know, everything's about cost and what you can afford. Not everybody can get the nice stuff. I played crappy stuff for a long time, and I was fine. So, uh, that was the only other thing that kind of sucks. And then when you're tuning these things, guys, too, there's actually a little tool that comes in here. There's a little notch, little dot right there. And there's a little Allen uh wrench tool very tiny and when you actually tune the guitar you're supposed to tune it to where it's in drop d and then once you lock the nut and you and you use your fine tuners here to tune it um as close as you can then for the micro tuning as you can say the that little extra you use that tool to get it and then you slide it back up um and that should uh keep in tune so that's how you properly use a detuner there's videos out there for that but i just wanted to give you a little um clip synopsis Again, make these things easier for you guys. Um, outside of that, I mean, it's it's very similar to the to the Frankenstein build. Obviously, it just has the EVH neck. It's got the selector switch that's reverse. It's got the Zebra pickup, and it's got the MXR knob. Outside of that, I mean, this guitar is essentially the exact same. So I thought it just looked, you know, really cool. You know, go ahead, take your snapshots for your builds if you want. You make it exactly like mine. You don't have to. And another thing, um, the cigarette burn right there. That's just stain. It's just stain. That's all it is. Uh, this, I also hit myself in the face. This right here. Uh, some of it was Sharpie, uh, before I went over it with the red, and some of it was actually where I had taped off and then took it off. Um, there's the black. I didn't go over to the reason why there is a black duct tape here either. So the black duct tape was here because when Eddie put in his cord here into the jack, the cord obviously just hangs freely, so he put it up, uh, when the, he would sometimes put it through the eye hook or he would just bring it down to here and then he would use the duct tape to tape over it and it would hold the cord there um out so just uh another thing that was kind of cool again it's on both frankensteins but that's what's there for uh gaffer's tape again you just it's literally just a roll of tape you unroll it cut it and then i put it like on a table and i just rolled it and then stuck it on there you have to replace this every once in a while because the stickiness wears off for your picks. Um, but again, that's just, I mean, that's how you do this stuff. And like I said, I'm not going to go over every detail that I went over from the Frankenstein guitar. I know there's some things I left off the Frankenstein guitar that I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, so again, this is going to be one of those, you know, shorter videos. But if you guys have any questions, if you have any suggestions, anything, like, you know, feel free to hit me up. I really don't mind. I don't care. I know I'm a busy guy, but... So I like it. I like being busy. Um, again, that's Sharpie there. I put that on the very end. Um, other than that, all the underneath black stuff uh, that you see here, here, uh, there. Uh, when it's in this status, you know, just tape those areas off where you want the black to. And then just remember where that tape is. Take a picture before. Uh, you paint it red or white or whatever, and then uh, that way you know where your tape's at because some of those pieces are really small, and you just go with your exacto knife and just take it off. Otherwise, when you go over this with all your clear coat and your finish, then uh, there might be a piece that just happens to fall off because it was just tape on there the whole time. Um, what else? Honestly, guys, I think that's that's it. This build turned out really well. It plays great. Like I said, the only drawback is it's heavy as hell. Um, you know? But again, here's just one last look. We'll keep this video relatively short. I know you guys got things to do. You got life out there besides just watching me and listening to me ramble on. 
Uh, but again, I'm just passionate about this stuff. I like the builds. I know there's other people that like to, too. And, uh, yeah. So if you have any questions, that's what I'm here for. I do not mind. Here's the back. Yeah, take your pictures if you want. There is a front and back picture of this in that magazine. Uh, it's not any close-up, so I really went off of the original Frankenstein for, for this from the Met. Um, those photos are pretty good. Um, again, I'll try to give you the how those things happen to look there. Try not to knock over my water bottle. And that's it. So again, if you have anything, let me know. Kyle is out. Peace.